Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to explore the reason for pressurizing and heating the desflurane vaporizer. Then, in part two, we're going to take a look at what happens if you dial in 6% for the patient when we're at, say, 6,000 feet in the air. If you haven't, I do recommend taking a look at the video discussing ISO and Acevo vaporizer, as we cover a couple of topics regarding vapor pressure more in depth there that are important to understand for this video but we'll touch on them here again briefly as well. So just like in most of our videos, we have to define a couple of things. And the first thing that we're going to define is vapor pressure. And what vapor pressure is, is the pressure exerted by molecules of a liquid that have been liberated to vapor form on the walls of a closed container at thermodynamic equilibrium. In other words, if you have this container and it's filled up with fluid or liquid that is volatile and you have these molecules floating around and bouncing off the, the walls of the container, the vapor pressure is the pressure exerted on the walls of this container by these molecules as they leave the liquid phase, enter the vapor phase, and smash off against the walls. Now the other thing we have to define is boiling. Now, boiling is the process by which liquids change phase of matter to vapor from liquid. And this happens when the vapor pressure equalizes or begins to reach pressure of the atmosphere. So I always kind of think of atmospheric pressure or pressurizing a liquid as the counterbalance to a liquid's vapor pressure. Uh, basically, the atmosphere is always kind of pushing down to try and put these molecules back down into liquid phase as they're trying to push out into a vapor or a gaseous phase. But when the vapor pressure of the molecule is almost or is actually equal to or even exceeds the atmospheric pressure, meaning that this pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressure, the pressure of the atmosphere can't push it from a vapor back into a liquid. And so this is when a liquid boils. Simply, boiling is liquid to gas and occurs when the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Next, we need to look back in our physics and chemistry textbooks at the old triple point phase diagram, which I'm actually just going to go ahead and draw here. Something like this, where on the x-axis, we have temperature, and on the y-axis, we have pressure. And in this first portion, we have solid, and we have liquid, and we have gas. I hope this is coming back to some of you. I know it's been a while for some of us from chemistry. And so from this graph, we can see that at high pressures, it becomes harder to turn from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this over here. I know my handwriting is not good, uh, but hopefully the point was there, at least while I was speaking. So if we look at desflorane, which has a vapor pressure of about 660 millimeters of mercury, this approximates our atmospheric pressure which is about 760 millimeters of mercury. And like we just discussed, boiling point is as your vapor pressure gets closer to or equals your atmospheric pressure. And well, the vapor pressure of desflorane is pretty close. So what this means is at room temperature, the vapor pressure of desflorane is almost equal to the atmospheric pressure, which means that at room temperature, desflorane wants to boil or become a vapor. So this is why we have to pressurize the desflorane vaporizer. 
Just like the atmospheric pressure, like we just drew over here with this container, tries to push vapor back down into a liquid, we're going to unnaturally increase the pressure instead so that it's two times that of the atmosphere. About We're going to increase it to 1,300 millimeters of mercury, double that of the atmosphere. This way, at room temperature, desfluorane, which would be here, moves up into here. We'll say point A to point B because we've increased the pressure so much that we're able to kind of squish all of the desfluorane molecules down into a liquid form. So now again I'm going to quickly erase this and, and that's why desfluorane has to be pressurized in order to keep it in a liquid otherwise it's all just going to be vapor at all times. So we're going to quickly talk about why the desfluorane vaporizer also has to be heated. Now again back in physics we need to remember the thermodynamic elements of a system. In the liquid desfluorane there are moving molecules and when they're in liquid form it means that the molecules are moving fast enough that they aren't compact to be a solid but they're moving too slowly to escape into a vapor form. You can kind of think of it as a terminal velocity to enter Earth's orbit to be able to leave gravity but not actually be ejected into space. So I'm going to go ahead and draw you know, another one of these tanks a little bit bigger here. Uh, the least I can do is erase this one. Now remember, like I said, these molecules are moving and they're leaving the liquid phase. But every time a molecule moves or leaves, it carries with it energy. Carries energy in the form of heat. Therefore, every molecule that leaves the liquid causes the temperature of the liquid to begin to drop. Now, vapor pressure is directly correlated, uh, sorry about the light color, vapor pressure is directly proportional or correlated to temperature. That's why the vapor pressure of water increases when you begin to heat it up and it begins to boil. So the hotter something is, the more of it is in vapor form, the higher the vapor pressure. As the system begins to cool, it gets harder and harder to liberate molecules from the liquid to the vapor phase because they can't move as fast because they're colder. As the liquid cools, less molecules would be available out here for the variable bypass portion, which you know we'll talk about in another video. Uh, less molecules are going to be available to be picked up and brought into the patient because less are being liberated from the liquid to the gas because it's too cold for them to be liberated and they don't move fast enough to escape the liquid form. As such, in order to maintain consistent output of volatile anesthetic, the solution must be warmed to facilitate molecules moving from liquid to vapor phase at such high pressures. So I hope this cleared up the heating and pressurizing of the desfluorane vaporizer. That's all for this video. In the next video, as I said, we'll take a look at what happens with the volatiles as we head up to 6,000 feet above sea level. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, or would like to get involved, please feel free to write to us. Otherwise, subscribe below and check in for our next video.